Most of you already know that I passed my HashiCorp Certified Terraform Associate exam and since then I've been receiving messages on LinkedIn, YouTube asking me how to clear the exam, what topics are covered in the exam, what resources to use. So in this video, I want to share with you everything you need to know to pass the exam along with the resources I used and my tips to pass your exam on your first attempt. Hey everyone, welcome to Cloud Champ. Before we dive into the tips and resources to pass this Terraform certification, let's understand the basics. If you're not familiar with this exam, this certification is provided by HashiCorp, which tests your knowledge on Terraform, a popular infrastructure as code tool. The Terraform certification is designed to validate your understanding of Terraform's core concept, best practices, and its usage in real world scenarios. The exam is multiple choice questions and it covers various topics like Terraform variables, modules, Terraform commands and more. This exam can be taken online and it's proctored. You have one hour to complete the exam and the cost of this exam is $70.50 plus the charges or taxes. It's worth noting that the exam does not include retakes. If you fail and you want to retake the exam, you need to pay for it. So you need to thoroughly prepare for the exam so that you passed in the first attempt and that is why you need to watch this video till the end. The exam is only available in English and its validity is for two years from the passing date. Now let's talk about the topics covered in the exam. This exam will have questions on these nine topics and let's understand them one by one. The first objective is understanding infrastructure as code concepts or IAC concepts. In this, you will be asked questions regarding what is IAC, what is the advantages of using IAC, how is it different compared to the manual creation of resources in the cloud. So you need to understand and focus on these topics. Number two is understanding Terraform's purpose versus other IAC tools. So in this, you need to know why Terraform is better than other IAC tools like CloudFormation or Pulumi or Azure ARM templates. So you need to know that Terraform is multi-cloud supporter. You can use Terraform with AWS, Azure, GCP. Whereas if you use CloudFormation, you can only work in AWS. If you use Azure ARM templates, you can only work with Azure. So you need to understand that Terraform is multi-cloud and platform agnostic. Also, you need to understand how Terraform uses state to manage resources on the cloud. So you need to understand the concept of Terraform state in this second objective. Number three is understand Terraform's basic. In this, you need to know how to install Terraform and pro different providers. You need to know how to work with different providers, how Terraform installs them. Or you need to know when to use remote exec provisioner or when to use local exec provisioner. So all these basic concepts you need to clear in this third objective. Moving on. Number four, we have use the Terraform CLI. So in this, you need to understand how Terraform FMT command works to format the code. fourth objective. Number fifth is interacting with Terraform modules. In this, you need to understand how modules work in Terraform. What is child module? What is root module? How you can use modules? Why are modules used? How to pass an argument from one module to another? How to version the module? What is public Terraform module registry? What is private module registry? And all of that things. Number six is navigate Terraform workflow. So here you need to understand the basic workflow of Terraform where you first write the code, then you plan to check what is going to be created, deleted or edited according to your code. And third, you apply the code to create that resource on the cloud. So you need to understand uh, commands like Terraform init, Terraform apply, Terraform plan, Terraform destroy. So these commands are required for you to understand the workflow required in this sixth module. Number seventh is implement and maintain state. Here you need to understand how to work with state. What is local backend? What is remote state backend? How can you store your Terraform state into your remote state backend like S3 or different backend options? You also need to know what is state locking and how to configure it. So all the things related to state is going to be asked in the seventh objective, which is implement and maintain state. Moving on, your number eight is read, generate and modify configuration. In this, you need to understand how to use Terraform variables and outputs, 
what is the difference between Terraform resource and data block. You need to understand the different built-in functions by Terraform. Also meta arguments like count, depends on life cycle. All of these you need to understand in this read, generate and modify configuration block. Lastly, you have number nine, which is to understand Terraform cloud and enterprise capabilities. In this, you they will be asking questions on different products by HashiCorp, which is Sentinel, uh, Terraform Enterprise, Terraform Open Source. So here you will be asked questions on what is the feature of Terraform Cloud? Uh, why should you use Terraform Cloud rather than using Terraform Enterprise? Here you can see my score uh, depending on all this exam objectives. The first two, uh, in the first two I got 100% correct. On third which is understand Terraform basics, I got 57% correct. Using Terraform CLI I got 66%. Interact with Terraform modules I got 50% correct. Navigate Terraform workflow is 75% correct. Implement and maintain state I got 100% correct. Then again 100% for eighth objective and ninth Again, 100 for understanding Terraform Cloud and Terraform uh, Enterprise capabilities. Now let's talk about the resources I used to prepare for my Terraform Associate exam. Firstly, I would highly recommend you checking out the Terraform official documentation and the notes that they have provided. I think Terraform has best documentation among all the different DevOps tools. The documentation is well organized, easy to navigate and contains examples relevant for the exam. Firstly, I would suggest you to check out the official documentation and use that to prepare for your exam. After you have gone through the documentation and read all the important topics, you can start with a Udemy course. Uh, this is what I would suggest. If you want to learn for free, I would suggest my own YouTube video where I have taught Terraform in 60 minutes, you will understand all the topics you need to know for this exam. After you have done the hands-on uh, following the Udemy or the YouTube video, you can use this Terraform practice question on Udemy, which will help you immensely uh, pass this exam. So the resources I used were official documentation by Terraform and this practice test on Udemy. My tips before you sit for the exam is to make sure you take detailed notes. I remember when I was studying, I took detailed notes on every concept and applied them while I was doing hands-on. Hands-on is the key to understand every topic. You will be able to understand things only when you work on Terraform writing code. So you need to do hands-on and if you want to do hands-on, you can uh, check out my videos where I have explained how to create EC2 instances using Terraform, how to create S3 buckets using Terraform, how to create VPC, RDS using Terraform. This way you will be able to understand how to use uh, different Terraform concepts like resources, variables, inputs, data blocks, provisioner. So when I did hands-on, I was able to understand all these topics like how to use modules, how to work with remote exec provision, how to work with meta arguments like count meta argument, depends on meta argument. And not only this, when you sit for the exam, while you answer the question, your mind will remind you that okay, you were doing this hands-on and this was the answer or this is what you used to tackle the situation. And that is when you can answer questions correctly. So hands-on is the key to understand each topic. You will not be able to answer the question only if you read or if you watch the videos, you need to do hands-on. And if you're giving this exam at home, make sure you have a stable internet connection, a quiet background, a webcam that meets the proctoring requirement. Also, you need to have the ID with you because the proctor is going to verify it before you start the exam. And when you give the exam, make sure you read and understand the question correctly before you answer it. And if you are stuck at any question, do not waste your time on that question only. You can flag it for review and come back again when you answer the other question. This way you will be able to manage your time properly and you will have time to answer the other question. So there you have it, the resources I used, my advice and the topics you need to cover for past this exam. I hope this video was informative and if you're sitting for the exam, best of luck. I hope you pass the exam. Thank you and have a good day.